Thank you very much. Did you wish to finish your answer? Yes. Yeah, so what I was trying to say is that the contracts that we have in place are about promoting the work of the agency. Um, one of the things that I wanted to do when we came to CMS is make sure that the American people understand the things that we're doing. We've had a historic number of initiatives, 16 initiatives, and it's important that the American people understand that. We did not have that expertise in-house at the time. Um, and the other thing that we use contractors are for is when we, um, we have something that we cannot do in-house, so that's one reason, or we need some short-term help. Uh, my job at the agency is to set the vision and set the agenda, and it's up to other staff members to determine whether that work can be done in-house or whether we need to hire contractors. And in relationship to uh, uh, CHIP, uh, wouldn't you agree that the Championing Healthy Kids Act was a, was a major step forward? Absolutely was. I think it's very important that children have access to health care coverage, very important to their development. And would you be surprised to learn that a number of members of this committee voted no? particularly those on the other side of the aisle. That would be very concerning. I understand. Also, I find it interesting just cleaning up some stuff here that uh, CBO estimates that 2.6 million more people have employer-funded insurance today than before President Trump took office. Were you aware of that? Yes, I think that our agency's uh, success and the success of the administration is clear. Premiums are lower, not only in the exchanges, but also in Medicare. Um, there are more choices for people in Medicare and in the exchanges, more than what we had when we came into office. Now, we've heard a lot today about sabotage, and my friend, uh, the gentleman from West Virginia, Mr. McKinley, talked about uh, the fact that sabotage has been used a lot. But I would have to say to my colleagues on the other side of the aisle that when you write a bill such as Obamacare and you put in there 3,033 times uh, the words the secretary appears, and 974 times the words, the secretary shall appear. And uh, off the top of his head, uh, Dr. Burgess indicated there were about 262 times that, the, that you, if you kept going out, that you know, shall determine, the secretary shall determine appear roughly. And we'll have to double check that one, but that's uh, off the top of his head. Um, wouldn't you think it would be unfair to say that, that the law had been sabotaged when the Congress, now remember that was a bill passed, Obamacare passed specifically and only by Democrats. No Republicans in the House voted for it. So if it was sabotaged, it was sabotaged because they gave too much power to the administrative branch of government, and today they find themselves with an administrative branch of government that has a different philosophical outlook, and therefore if it were in fact sabotaged, it was sabotaged at its initiation in the uh, passage of that bill. Would you agree with me on that? I would agree, and the result speaks for themselves. Premiums are lower. When I got, to the, got into my role, premiums were going up 100% in some cases, some 200% in some cases. This is for the first time that we've actually seen premiums go down. They went down last year. They're going down again. We've put out over 12 reinsurance waivers, and in some cases, you've seen double-digit decreases, 30%. So for all the work that we're doing, uh, I don't know how we measure that, but to me, that looks like success. Yes, ma'am. And now, so let's get to something else I need to talk about. Uh, earlier this year, it came to my attention that CMS planned to include non-invasive ventilators in Medicare's competitive acquisition program for durable medical, durable medical equipment. In June, Mr. Welch and I led a letter signed by 180 of our colleagues expressing concern about that decision. I support the goal of ensuring financial responsibility in healthcare, but I'm not convinced that this method is appropriate in every situation. Until we know that access to a critical piece of medical equipment won't be compromised, I don't think we should be making monumental changes to the acquisition process. And I, and I just got your letter uh, arrived yes, late yesterday afternoon in response to that letter where you said we're not going to do it on invasive. But here's the problem I have. I have a r rural district, as does my friend Mr. Welch. And what happens is, is that if you go to this cost-only issue, in those rural areas, you're going to make somebody drive 45 minutes an hour. I remember talking to one of my suppliers about a case where the, the lady lived on top of uh, one of the two highest peaks in Virginia, and he took her oxygen up there to her and made sure that she had what she needed for her, her ventilator supplies, non-invasive. She's not coming down the mountain, particularly not in the wintertime, to get what she needs if the, now the low-cost supplier is only located in the town 
And if it becomes a point where they have to get to Bristol, you're talking about even more time. But just to get down the mountain to Marion, mm -hmm. it's going to take a lot of time. So I would ask you all to really take a look at that because I'm afraid that in the rural districts, our folks are not going to get served. I yield back. Time's expired. Turn now recognizes the gentleman from California, Mr. Ruiz.